Hello, YouTube. There's this ongoing debate in the fountain pen world about the relative merits of ebonite feed and plastic feed. Here I'm going to take a look at it from a designer's angle. First of all, we have to make clear that the word plastic is not used properly here. It is an adjective meaning something that is three-dimensional or having a malleability. The noun is plastics with an S. Ebonite is also a kind of plastics, but here we understand that by plastic it refers to injection molded thermoplastics, a family of material that gets molten by heat and solidified when cooled. Injection molding is the method for making thermoplastic feeds, but ebonite, which is vulcanized natural rubber, is a thermal set and it needs to be machined in the shape. Let's look at what the feed does in the fountain pen. The top of the feed and the bottom of the nib needs to have good contact between them so that ink forms a thin film in between due to capillary action. When not in use, the film must still be there always, ready for writing, and during writing, ink is pulled out of the nib and the feed needs to keep supplying it with ink. So the ink film between the nib and the feed acts as a buffer. Just in case the film reservoir puts out more ink than required, the buffer has to be big enough to accommodate it. OK, let's get into our investigation. After machining, an ebonite feed tends to have a textured surface, but an injection mold of thermoplastic feed is smooth, so ink would tend to wet the former with beads on the latter. But if proper contact with the underside of the nib is maintained, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, as capillary action would take over anyway. By nature, ebonite is more brittle than thermoplastics, so it cannot be machined into intricate shapes, which is easily achieved by injection molding. That does not play very well with the popularity of cartridge converter pens, which needs a feed with a tail like this. This tail fits into the plug that goes into the socket of the cartridge or converted to acquire ink. Ebonite cannot be machined with a tail for the purpose because it will just simply break off. In that sense, a molded thermoplastics feed is obligatory for cartridge converter pens. But for other types of pens like eyedropper, bulk filler or piston filler, it is still a valid proposition. The same issue carries to the buffer as well. Precision injection molding allows closely packed fins to be created. And these gaps work as extra buffer for holding on extra ink. It is possible to machine fins onto ebonite, but they will not be as closely packed. But if ink supply is properly regulated, it is very rare for this extra buffer to kick in. Many early pens do not have finned buffers at all, and they still work perfectly, like this one. But for pens like eyedroppers or with flex nips, where ink supply can be erratic, one with a more effective thin buffer would be desirable. For instance, when noodlers supply flex nips routinely, they switch to a feed with a bigger thin buffer to accommodate the varying demand for ink supply. Then here's the factor that really matters in my opinion. While ebonite is a thermoset, meaning that once solidified, it cannot turn into liquid form again when heated, it is still able to deform slightly when heated, and would stay in that shape when cooled. So as a result, it can be heat set to match the nib it's partnered with. With the pen fitted out, the nib and feet are put into freshly boiled water like that for, say, half a minute, and then pressed together. This heat setting operation would make good contact between the two, giving effective capillary action. Thermoplastic is different though. If you heat it enough to make it malleable, it just turns into goo. So a thermoplastic feed cannot be heat set at all. So here's the crunch. If you want a cartridge converter pen, there's no chance for an ebonite feed. If the nip and feed are manufactured to a high level of precision, where there's good contact between them, there would be no operational difference. However, 
The Ebonite fleet offers the opportunity to fine tune its partnership with the NIP, so if alternate NIPs are contemplated, it becomes an advantage. I hope this is of some use, and I'll be back again soon with new content. Bye just for now.